Section 14 of the Communications Service Tax Act, as amended, Act 754, as amended by Act 864, which mandated the Ministers of Communications and Finance to set up a common platform to monitor revenues due to the state from the communication service tax and other taxes and levies on communication service providers in the country. After a lot of controversy, which delayed the actual operationalization of the platform, it commenced operations some in 2018, I believe, yes. And even though the contract was signed in December 2017, it took about a year for it to commence operations. And even then, the mobile money component was delayed further until early this year, when that also became operational. It has four main components, fraud management, traffic monitoring, revenue assurance, and mobile money monitoring. And its unique feature is that it is connected directly into the billing notes of all telecom service providers in this country and independently receives real-time information of all activities that take place on that sector in terms of the actual signals that provide the services. It is not connected to any of the nodes that deal with the content that is um, transmitted on that platform in terms of voice or data communications. But technology that facilitates the transmission of that content is what is interested in. And so that is where it is connected to. So far, the results that it has achieved is evidence of less cost and more value for the state. It's resulted in a monthly savings of $1.1 million over the previous contracts. And I'll explain. Prior to um, 2017, Suba and AfriWave were providing revenue assurance services, traffic monitoring services to both the GRA and the NCA. And they were paying in excess of $2.5 million every month for those services to each to both agencies. So cumulatively, they were paying $2.5 million to both NCA and GRA. The common platform um, provides a savings of $1.1 million per month on those previous contracts because it cost us $1.4 million a month for both agencies on that sector. And so over the lifetime of the five-year contract, it will result in a saving of $66 million to the state. It also monitors real-time transactions, $2.5 billion every day within the telecoms sector. And so it receives information about the transmission of 2.5 billion transactions in the telecom sector, i.e. calls, SMS, mobile money transactions. And it also monitors mobile money transactions as an added component. The fraud management component, which has enabled us to um, they, they've set up a fraud management system known as Telecop, and it originates 150,000 international calls into Ghana every month to detect fraudulent SIM cards being used to generate those calls. And so this is specifically set up to combat SIM boxing, which costs the state an enormous, not just the state, but telecoms operators as well, an enormous amount of money every month. Since that was the first component which went live in 2018 on the common platform. And from inception to date, it's made tax savings of over $205.6 million 
dollars, which would have been lost to the state if those SIMs hadn't been deactivated. And so projecting over the life of the contract, it's expected to deliver tax savings of approximately 795.9 million CDs over the five-year period. And this has been made possible through the state-of-the-art fraud management system that has been set up. On revenue assurance, the Common Platform provides the following information to the GRE. Revenue to the government from top-ups, measurement of top-ups per operator by the Common Platform, and actual consumption by the operators measured by the Common Platform. With this, the Ghana Revenue Authority is now able to verify the actual revenue streams of the mobile network operators, plug revenue leakages, and more accurately predict revenue trends from the sector for planning and policy formulation. Prior to the establishment of the common platform, revenue was declared in bulk to GRE, and so it was unable to disaggregate exactly what was coming from which activity um, of the operators. For mobile money monitoring, the common platform has reported an average monthly usage of 29.1 billion CDs, 195.8 million transactions, with 71 million CDs generated by the operators in transaction fees each month. A further breakdowns of transaction types for informed policy making decisions are also possible with the platform. This is of particular interest to me, but well, this is where the finance minister and I diverge, because I think that that 71 million, which is generated by the operators in transaction fees, they ought to pay taxes on that revenue to the state. We're still having conversations about that. And let me add here that nobody is talking about actual um, mobile money transactions that are conducted by individuals. However, I am interested in the revenues that the mobile network operators earn from the transaction fees that all users of the service pay to them. And I think the GRE ought to be having a conversation with them about that. Under declarations have also been detected from the uh, introduction of the common platform. For we have uncovered that prior to the introduction of this platform, 300 million in taxes was lost from under declarations between 2015 to the first quarter of 2017. And the slides will illustrate that further. The, we analyze um, communication service tax, VAT, NHIL, and get fund um, declarations to GRE from 2015 to date. And notice that um, prior to the announcement of the establishment of a common platform in 2017 March, there had been significant fluctuations in, and differences in the declarations made for VAT and CST, which should have tallied uh, because they're largely from the same fields. But there were significant variations in the declarations made for VAT and NHIL prior to March 2018, March 2017, when we held a stakeholders forum and announced the establishment of the common platform. After 20, March 2017, some alignment was very visible between declarations made between from VAT and NHIL by the network operators. And the question that one should ask is, what had happened between uh, prior to March 2017 and post March 2017 for us to witness those wide variations in the declarations made on VAT and CST to the GRE? And we, profs, pro, we, we um, states categorically that the only intervening factor was the establishment of the common platform. 
And so the differences that have been noticed are attributable to the positive benefits that the common platform have brought to date. Now, an estimated 470 million in taxes have also been saved between first quarter of 2017 to date in terms of the proper declarations being made by the tax authority, by the uh, network operators to the tax authorities post in, in implementation of the common platform. So if the common platform had not been established, 470 million would not have been declared to the tax authorities since the first quarter of 2017. And that would have been a cumulative potential loss of 1.5 billion to the exchequer had the common platform not been implemented. And so in a nutshell, these are the benefits that we have derived from the common platform. And it vindicates the resolve of government to put in place, to give effect to the law by putting in place the common monitoring platform to verify actual declarations of VAT and CST and other taxes in the sector and ensure that all the players in this sector pay at the actual due to the exchequer. That is also giving an impetus to our Ghana Beyond Aid agenda. If we all pay our due, we will raise the needed revenues to finance our own development without looking at external assistance for it. I must hasten to add that the common platform doesn't generate revenue. It only monitors the revenue that has been declared and verifies within the sector. So far, um, it's justified its inclusion, if I might use football terminology, and justified the um, decision to set up that um, platform for the protection of revenues due to the state. And so I will hand over to Leo to come and walk us through the actual presentation. Ministers, uh, members of parliament, uh, representation from the GRA, the NCA, uh, honorable press members, thank you all for coming. Uh, since the minister did such a good job, I think, of, uh, of the first part, I won't, uh, I won't repeat it. What I'll do is I'll go straight to uh, the concluding statement that she made about the potential uh, under-declaration of revenues. Uh, so I, I'd like to walk you all through this process as we went, because what ended up happening was the common platform went through its normal processes and identified some discrepancies, uh, some inconsistencies. Uh, so we requested additional information working through the NCA and the GRA, uh, first back to 2018 and then back to 2015. Uh, so what we ended up doing, if you go to the next slide, uh, this is the information that we ended up working through this process. So this includes the operator's detailed CST, VAT, and HIL get fund summarized declarations as given to the GRA for 2016 to 2019. It included the CST taxable revenue summarized re and received from the GRA for 2015 and 2019. The actual CST tax assessments and payments received from the GRA. The common platform data confirming the actual relevant revenues that's the credit that's loaded onto each, each person's IDs. Unfortunately, that's for only 2019. Remember, the common platform is a real online, a real-time online system, so we can't use that to verify what happened far in the far distant past. But we were able to use that to verify where we are today. And the last thing is that the CP, we looked at the CP revenue de uh, data related to the operator's ERP systems, that's their financial systems which the common platform has direct access to. Uh, again, for 2018 all the way to 2019. Now you go to the next page. Uh, no, sorry, back one page, that page. Uh, on the left-hand side, and I, I do apologize for the very small writing, 
Uh, this is the graphic chart from 2015 to the first quarter of 2017. Now you'll see there are two lines there, and I guess I apologize also, I hope the blue line you can all see, but the red line is all of the revenue related to VAT, and the blue line is all the revenue related to the CST. Now there's, they, they should be slightly different because there are some items that are subject to VAT, but not to CST. So uh, you should expect them to the VAT line to be sl slightly higher. Uh, but what you see is huge volatility, and uh, thank you, I don't know how you did that, but, uh, and also that they don't match at all, so they're just completely disconnected. So what that means is that there's a tremendous lack of reliability of the data prior to the announcement of the CP. As I said, this is up to the first quarter of 2017. In February of 2017, and then in, in March, uh, March 8th of 2017, was when the ministry announced that the Common Platform was coming. If I request now you go to the next page, okay, you can see what happened immediately after that. Uh, that lot, the red line there is on March of 2017, and you can see very clearly that right after that the volatility immediately reduced, and this is what I would expect from a regular telephone company. Uh, for example, January is 31 days, you'd expect it to be a bit bigger than February with fewer days. You can also see that the red line is usually slightly above the blue line, which is where the VAT and the CST should be. Okay, so with that then I ask for the next slide. Good. Now we go back to just taking one of those two lines. We're just looking at the CSTable revenue Okay, so that's uh, the brown jagged line, so it's exactly the same that you saw before. And then we drew a trend line through there to identify statistically, because all, all of this was done with advanced mathematics. So statistically, where would you predict the future to go if it continued as the status quo was? Okay, the green line, you can see there's a, there's a little thin green line inside the, the thick green line is the actual subscribers, total number of industry subscribers for uh, that particular month. So you can see there's a very clear correlation between the subscribers and the revenue. Okay, so you would expect, as the subscribers go forward to the right, that the same thing would continue. If I request the next slide, please. And yet we see that that's completely not what happened. We have, in addition to what we just talked about, we have the new blue line. So the blue line is exactly the same revenue, it's the CST-able revenue, from March 2017 onwards to the end, to, uh, I think it's to August of this year, but uh, the trend is about the same. So you can see, if you drew a trend line going through there, there's a statistically, it's mathematically different uh, 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 slopes to those two lines, okay? So if you put it all together, it's difficult to come to any other conclusion than underreporting brought to light by the common platform. <laughs> Next page, please. Okay, so if you look at this area now, so we've shaded a yellow area. This is exactly as the minister said before. The yellow shaded area represents the estimated under-declaration that would have persisted had the common platform not been uh, introduced. So the area represents the amount that the government has added to its taxable revenue, thus gaining more tax due to the introduction of the common platform. As the minister said very clearly, this is approximately 300 million Ghana CDs of CST, VAT, NHIL, and GET Fund revenue to the government. Um, now, you might see, oh, sorry, what happened? Okay, well, I'll talk to it anyways, and you'll have to use your imaginations. Uh, there's a, there was a, a blue, s okay, so that's the Boston Aquarium. <laughs> I should hope not, but... Um, do I 
I need to go and help? Okay, so uh, what I was saying is, you, you notice there's a, a blue circle up at the top. That's our belief of increasing compliance on behalf of the telecoms operators. And on the bottom, you see the green circle. You all remember that through 2018 and 2019, particularly coming up to the third quarter of 2018, I'm sorry, 2017 and 2018, uh, coming up to uh, the third quarter of 2018, the, the, the privacy issues and the various other court cases that came up were increasingly strident. And you have to ask why, and I'm trying not to be too, too there. So now let's take a look at the last slide. There we go. Okay. So the, the red part is what the minister had alluded to before. This is the potential under-declaration from the past. Now, the red shaded area represents the estimated under-declarations that have already happened, which would not have been brought to light had the common platform not been introduced. So the area represents the amount that the government would have collected had the common platform been introduced earlier, and thus represents a loss of tax revenues. Our current estimate for the shaded amount in red is approximately 470 million CDs to the, of CST, VAT, NHIL, and the GET Fund to the government of Ghana. So the total value of the common platform to the people of Ghana, if this was to continue through to the end of 2022, which is the end of our, uh, the common platform contract, is approximately 1.5 billion CDs. So as the original slide says, less cost, more value. With that, I turn it back to the Honorable Minister. For an initial five-year term from December 2017 to 2022, now it is renewable if stated conditions are met for another five years. However, if we determine that sufficient capacity has been transferred and knowledge has been transferred to the current uh, NCA and GRA, then we may not renew the contract. But um, that is all subject to an assessment that will be made um, next year to see whether or not we go forward with this contract or not. But I think that based on the presentation, we're all clear in our minds that it's been a useful investment that has been made by government. Now, what happens to the under declarations that have been uncovered? That information is made available to GRE, and they carry on the conversations with the network operators. The detailed breakdown and all that will be made available to GRE, and they would apply the law. They may decide to pardon them. They may decide to take it further, but that is not for humble me to determine. No more questions. Okay. A series of discussions with the um, telcos on the implementation of the directive to stop the upfront deductions of CSDs. They've indicated that they need some time, up to the 26th of November, to configure their systems so that that is done. They've been granted that period. However, all those monies that have been declared, deducted from customers up front, um, the 7% or so, will be refunded, is being refunded to customers since the 20th of October. And so if you would check, the notification would come that um, the deduction has been made and then a, a, a refund would be placed, on, a notification of a refund would also be given to you. And I'm sure you can all verify that. So until the 26th of November, that regime would operate until they're able to configure their systems. And then the upfront deductions would stop. Thank you very much.